Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Luke, thank you very much for watching. Do appreciate it. In this video, we are going to be looking at the cab of the brand new Mercedes Actros. Uh, it's the Miracam uh, Actros uh, 69 plate, it's brand new. Uh, currently the 10th of September. Uh, this was registered on the 1st of September. So this is literally 10 days old. And it's the second day I've got it. So I thought, let's do a cab tour. Um, where to start so should we look at the main things and the main thing really is the cameras cameras are actually on the inside of the truck um well not the cameras itself but the display for the cameras if i just turn the ignition on here we go so you can see i'm currently getting loaded and uh yeah so the, there's a camera outside i don't think you can quite see just there look and that's uh looking at all the all the stuff outside and producing it on the inside now on camera it does not look that bright you have to take my word for it it's a lot brighter in person i think that's the way that the screen is it's like a, a non-reflective screen so um but yeah there's that you've also got your main dashboard down here that has all your speedometer and stuff on and you also got a, a second screen here which has all, all your information on you can turn your lights on and off it's all touch screen so where should we start so firstly uh the bed so this particular model has got a premium comfort mattress uh, I do have my bedding with me just in case I've got to do a night out but I'm not gonna actually set it up just in case I don't actually need it but uh, yeah you've got your bed on here presumably they want you to sleep this way around uh, with your head on the passenger side because all the controls are here so if you press that button there the lights on the internal switches turn on look which is good uh, we turn them off but yeah we've got your night heater uh, that's to turn your radio up and down uh, that is for the sunroof press that button sunroof opens uh, and then obviously like I said you've got your lights your main lights you can also turn that light on as well if you needed to so yeah that's the bed so in terms of storage you've got three lockers on the top one two and three uh, they're all relatively large the middle one the biggest one um, with these two being ever so slightly smaller because of uh, the beams well I, can, well I can only assume with the beams so you've got those for storage you've also got the middle uh, component here and you've also got one on the passenger side from the passenger seat uh, you, a you can see it folds up somehow there we go so it folds up completely it's got to put a bit of pressure on it and so it gives you plenty of space to oh, you can lay down on the floor I suppose if you really wanted to <laughs> but if we put that back down sit in the passenger seat for a second on some of the Actros models, um, this can lift up and has like a table on it. Uh, you don't have that on this particular model, that's fine. But from the passenger side, you can turn on the reading lights, which again, there's these ones up there. Press it again, and uh, that one turns on as well. Obviously, you can undo your window and lock it as well. You've got a nice bit of storage here. Um, it's easily reachable from the passenger side, so presumably you could sit like at an angle and maybe work on a laptop there could potentially do that but uh yeah from the driver's side um it's a little bit further away so perhaps not as good you've got plenty of gibbons down here it's a bit dark so you can't really see you've got pen holder uh you got what i can assume is a bottle holder there and then a couple of other extra uh compartments this slides out so you can reveal your drunk cupboard <laughs> And then underneath the bed, you've got two drawers. One is a fridge. So uh, you've got your fridge in there. And your other one is your storage. So at the moment, I've got a bin in there, using that as my bin. You've got a drawer there that can close up and you can put stuff on there as well if you wanted to. So yeah, that's uh, most of the main things inside the cab. Uh, you've also got controls up here which again do the sunroof and puts the lights on and uh, other than that there's not an awful lot of switches a few switches down there and right in an awkward place you've got these switches but um like i said most of the operation is done by pressing this screen here but i do like the fact that the steering wheel like goes well up i'm quite a big guy and I've got loads of space. I can just easily get out of my driver's seat. There's just loads more space. Whereas in, an, in my MAN, it's a bit harder because A, the steering wheel doesn't go up as much and B, the drives and the reverse gear sticks are all like here as well. 
So, um, yeah, I like it. Really, really like it. Good one. <laughs> I should probably do another video uh, later regarding using the, um, the multimedia devices because uh, there is a lot on it to go through. But uh, yeah, this is the cab. I just thought I'd quickly do this while I'm getting loaded. Show you guys the inside of the cab because no doubt you will ask about it. And uh, yeah, I'm here to help. So you've got a 24 socket there and you've got two 24 sockets here as well. But uh, I found that the bottom one only works when your ignition is on and the top one is on all the time. I don't know whether that's an actual feature or not, but uh, I found that with mine anyway, the one that I'm using. Okay, so I just wanted to go into a little bit more depth with regards to the multimedia interface right here. This is going to be your, your main screen for operating most of the functions on the truck, to be honest with you. You do have shortcut buttons down here. They're all relatively self-explanatory, so you've got your temperature up and down. If you see here, it will change. So, just press it and obviously the, the temperature will change. We've got uh, the quick menu for the air. So if you want hot air, cold air, this is what you would press. Um, that button will take you to the page where you can adjust your mid lift axle, your, your heel starts, everything like that is all on that page. From this page, you can also adjust your level. So if you want to, you can make the truck go up. So the truck's going up, you can go stop, or you can put the truck back down again, it's up to you. And if you want to self level it, just press that button. It'll come up on the, the main dashboard that the level is control, the level is leveling, <laughs> if that makes sense. But when that message uh, pops away, you know that you are then level. Okay, so also from this screen, we also have the timer control, so you can set an alarm, you can choose when your um, night heat is going to kick in and when it's going to switch back off again. And you can also go into the more uh, dedicated settings. So this is where you can turn options on and off. So you've got the predictive power chain control. Uh, and into urban i've got into urban switched on because i really enjoyed having it on going through like towns and city centers uh it just followed the flow of traffic it read roundabouts brilliantly so i always had that on uh you've got the active brake assist which was on a standard have it on traffic sign assist so with traffic sign assist you can see here that on the dashboard it's recommending that the speed limit's 50 that's because the main road we come off just now to get to where we were there was a speed limit of 50 miles an hour so that's good. Eco roll, what that means is, um, it's hard to explain when you're, when you're not driving, but normally the rev counter's in the green. And if you just let go of the accelerator and use momentum, it would drop down to sort of about here, sort of about 5,000 RPM, maybe less actually. And it basically goes against what they teach you when, when you learn to drive. It, it essentially puts the clutch down <laughs> to save fuel. So it's, it's definitely very good. Uh, obviously you've got the attention assist and also the crawler mode so that's all within the assistance systems display and operation so you've got your language your units your screen brightness i uploaded the picture onto a driver's forum and they were saying like how bright it was but you know you can lower it or you can brighten it it's completely up to you you can have it wherever you like um i'd call it somewhere in the middle instrument so that is this one over here so we've got it all the way down there you can I don't know whether you can quite tell on the camera, but it's slightly darker, and now I've got it slightly brighter. It's a lot more clearer when it's actually uh, dark. And then we've got the head unit as well. And there we go, uh, the drive and mirror cam. So again, you can adjust just how bright that screen's gonna be. So it's worth pointing out that on camera, it doesn't look as bright as it actually does in real life. But yeah, I've whacked it up. Now it's all the way down to the bottom. To the eye, there isn't much difference during the daylight. I would imagine that's uh, uh, a more difference when it's actually in the dark. And again, you can do the same to the co-driver uh, dash, uh, co-driver mirror, which is the one over there. So that's everything under the uh, the operation system. And another way of accessing this is by pressing these six buttons up here, and that just takes you straight there. So if you if you're actually at the home page, rather than clicking that button or that button you can just click that and it takes you straight to it so that's very 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 handy uh, we've also got the information page uh, that will tell you uh, what your axles are like any maintenance which is due uh, and any events which may have happened uh, next to that we have the light switch so if we press that button it takes you to the lights menu uh, from here you can control the lights so you can put side lights on you put your four beam on switch it on to auto if you like 
uh, or you can just have it completely off, it's completely up to you. You can also control the interior lighting. So from here, we can put that light on and then we can put that light on. So you see the lights are on up there and then you can turn it off again. Oh, there we go, if I get it right. And it does the same for the uh, passenger side as well. So you can control all your lighting from this screen here if you wanted to. The next button is the sat nav. Now this does take a few seconds to pop up. I think that's more typical TomTom -tom than anything else. <laughs> but it does use uh, an official truck TomTom -tom map. So when you put your destination in, so actually I can put my destination in where I'm about to go to because I've been there recently. Uh, we are about to go to Hambridge Road in Newbury. So you put drive and then it allows you to confirm your truck details, so your height, your length, your width, your max race weight and your, and your max speed. So it is a truck sat nav, so that's good. We can put go to destination, that calculate the route and, uh, and Bob's your uncle. That's the route we're about to take, we'll just zoom on out. Could do that in a sec. So that's your TomTom. -tom. Once that destination is put in as well, you can go through all these settings and it won't actually lose the destination. It, it saves it as, as the, the point of interest you want to go to. Okay, next button along is your phone. So obviously you connect your phone to it. I've got a Galaxy S10. You get your call list, you get your contacts. It's all on there. And you obviously you can make dials as well. Obviously make sure you're not driving when you do that. Okay, so the next button along is your music button. So if you press that, that'll take you to your Bluetooth. I've got my phone connected to it, as I've just said. Uh, and your music can play. So I'll just play a quick snippet. Press play. And there you go, so it plays your music for you. And then you've obviously got your volume up and down button. I find personally, press it a couple of times, this pops up and then you can just use the slider. It's a lot quicker. If I just show you, look, press and hold the plus button. Goes up quite slowly. If you keep tapping the down button, it still goes down quite slowly. So I personally find, press it once, bring that up, slide it to where you want it. And uh, so yeah, that's that's the sh all the shortcut buttons for the multimedia interface. But of course, you haven't actually got to use any of them because if you hit the home screen, it takes you to this menu, and everything we've just been through is essentially on this, just like it would be on a tablet. So you don't actually have to press the shortcuts if you don't want to. If you want to use the touch screen, you can go into your climate control and obviously move that. Press home again. You can go in to see your lights, for example. Press your lights, and you can sort all that out without actually touching any of the shortcuts down here. Now obviously we've got the hazard button, you've got your level in, you can stop and your diff lock, lane assist, stability control, that's all on there as well. And you've also got an electronic handbrake which is new to the Mercedes. Uh, there's, there's quite a few ways you can use this. I personally find, uh, press, can't quite see, but you press the brake, press the part button, that'll take the handbrake off. If I want to activate the handbrake, then I'll just pull this back and that turns the handbrake on, doesn't do anything when you're not put the brake on. So it's like a safety feature. If you accidentally knock it or whatever, nothing's going to happen. It stays on until you press the brake. So um, yeah, that's um, that's the, the like the multimedia interface. You've also got your heads-up dashboard display as well, which again has lots and lots of different features on there. Um, so where should we start? Where should we start? So um, on the steering wheel itself. By the way, it's worth pointing out that all of that can be controlled using this touchpad here this um what would you call it touchpad and all these buttons on this side of the steering wheel controls that and the touchpad on this side and all of these buttons control that so it's very easy to uh to do everything we just did but just using the touchpad here look you can see, as you can see so you can go into lights turn your lights on your side lights you have four beam and then so you can turn them off again if you want or press the home button and say you want to get the sat nav back up press ok wait a few seconds and the sat nav loads up so it can all be controlled on here as well as volume and answering phone calls but let's get back to this so where should we start where should we start so let's start with the uh the right stick here so you shift gears using this here so you can put it to drive neutral or reverse uh you can also uh, change the type of driving so right now it's in economy if you look here so it's in economy mode if you press that in you go to normal mode and then you press it again and go to power mode. So depending on which mode you're in um, will mean like how many revs it goes up to before it changes gear. Recommended that you have it in economic mode, it will change gear in the green band there. Um, so yeah, that's what that stick does. Also has a oh, sorry, also has a three-level retarder. So if you go down once, it's level one, and again again, level two, one more time, level three. 
which is uh, great. That symbol there comes up when your engine brake or retarder is on, depending on what you want to call it. I think Mercedes called it a retarder. I would call it an engine brake, but it doesn't really matter. Turn it all the way up and uh, the light goes off. And then using the touchpad on the right hand side here, we got loads of different sort of like sub menus. So as you can see, I'm swiping left and the menu here is slightly highlighted. If I swipe right, it highlights the middle. Swipe right again, highlights the right hand side. So we start with, what should we we'll start with the left hand side. So start with the left hand side. Um, once you're on this page, you see now you've got this, the dots here. So you can go up and down and you can go through all the menus. So all your levels are okay. This is my um, miles per gallon I've done today. So so far I've done 131 miles, four hours, 20 minutes of driving, uh, averaging 30 miles per hour and averaging 8.5 miles per gallon. If you press okay, you can then have a look for the rest of the week. So this is my week details. I'm averaging 9.4 for the week, um, which actually is for me is good. <laughs> but um, yeah, I like this. You can just go up and down. And uh, if you press the middle button, if it has any more sub menus, it will um, go into a bit more detail. So there's our reservoir pressure. That's the left hand side. Of course, whichever one you want to see the most, if you just highlight it and then press the back button, it will keep it on there. So that's now kept on there. Middle one, uh, you can go up and down and depending on which mode you're in, if you're in sort of like auto slash manual, by that I mean you dri you're driving the truck, then it will display um, something more similar to that. If you go into the PPC mode and let the truck drive for you, it's slightly different, looks like that, but also has uh, like vehicles in front of you. So um, you know just like exactly how far away they are and things like that, so that's good. And if you go into the right hand side, uh, it shows your taco time and uh, shows what you've got on Bluetooth and also your phone call list. Hopefully I'll blur that out. <laughs> to set your PPC and cruise control, you just hit the plus button. Um, so we can set it to like 50 miles an hour, it just popped up but because we're not moving and not going to do anything. Press and hold that button for your limiter. There we go. So you see it changed there. Press it again and you can switch between um, normal cruise mode and adaptive cruise mode which is that one there that's all very good and of course we can go to the home page just by pressing that button or returning the only other button we've got to worry about is the settings button if you press the settings button it will ask you how close you want to stay to the vehicle in front so using up and down you can pick and uh, I just went for the middle one just to try it out and actually it seems pretty decent so I leave it on the middle one uh, and essentially that means you're going to stay I think it's around about sort of 350 350 like feet away from the vehicle in front so nice and safe press the settings button again that's that button by the way press it again it takes you to this mode now this is for your cruise control this truck is very smart it will accelerate and de-accelerate depending on the road conditions ahead so basically what you can do is if you're going down a hill up uh, you can do the upper speed tolerance of two miles per hour so if you've got the speed limit set at like 50 miles an hour it will go down the hill at 52 miles per hour because that's the tolerance you're allowing it uh, when it's gaining momentum it will just stay at the normal pace the, the revs will drop and then when you're going up the hill it's um, basically the more you got this on the more power it's going to use getting up the hill then you've got your cornering speed so this truck like I said can predict corners and roundabouts so I've got it on the second one which is it's all right it's maybe a little bit fast sometimes a little bit slow it's a bit hit and miss so I'm leaving it on two because I found the middle one was a little bit too fast for me when I'm fully loaded I think it kind of really does depend on what you actually got on so you, you can adjust any of them as you wish Ooh. and then finally the last one is uh, when you're coasting so again just have it on uh, on the middle one personally I find that that works best so yeah that's uh, all the controls that uh, this stick does the left stick is pretty self-explanatory you've got your windscreen wash there we go. You got your, your indicators left and right, and uh, your headlights. So if you bring it that way, you've got your headlight, that way your headlights stay on as well. So yeah, big shout out to Rigel in Swindon uh, for letting me use this vehicle for this week. They're letting me have it for a whole entire week. Uh, very kind of them. And I am putting it through its paces, uh, pulling quite heavy work, 44 tonnes up to, um, and then coming back empty. So yeah, it's going well. Anyway, thanks for watching. That's the inside of the cab. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, until next time, drive safe. See you soon. Bye-bye.